right, perfect. Let's it's our lightning round. We as yeah. voice professionals, we could talk about everything. Oh, we could sit here all day. <laughs> I'm gonna get out my glass of wine. We'll just chat. Okay. okay. This is from Bruno Espinosa from uh, Peru. What kind of movements may be useful for exercises or things like mesa di voce? So, um, I put that into the imagery category. I do think drawing can help that. So it's sort of that idea of, you know, scribbling wide and then getting more gentle, that kind of thing, uh, for drawing. For Simba actually works well for that too, because it's that idea that we want to keep the voice going, moving in a single direction, but if you want to decrescendo, if you want to crescendo, I find the outward movement is good. If you want to decrescendo, the inward movement is good. Mm. Um, so things like that, that sort of parallel our mental idea of what it, it's not a literal what's happening obviously in the folds, but we've made these associations that I find that those kinds of forward and back kind of movements or drawing are helpful. And I do that for phrasing too. There's some people that, you know, if the phrase is sort of very quantal, you can get them if you get like a rainbow arc kind of thing or with your hand. Uh, and that sometimes can even save your breath. People can, you know, breath control, I think is over. I, I honestly, I tell singers, you have enough breath for everything. You always will have enough breath. If your valve is efficient and you've thought about the phrase, you have enough breath. So it's that idea of, oh yeah, I just, I wasn't thinking of the longer phrase. So those are, those are tools I use. Man, I, mm, so much yeah. great stuff, and I would love to get off onto breathing, but I'm going to discipline myself. So yeah, I know. Oh, that's my bugaboo. It ruined. I had, it really that idea of breathing. I had some of the best teachers in the world too. It destroyed me because I was like thinking too much. Anyway, we could. That's a whole other can of worms. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do another masterclass on that. Okay. Uh, yeah. The question again is: If we look at what what is mesa di voce, mm. there's a whole definition in and of itself. I, I think um, we need to also talk to Bruno and see what he what he is mm. and he has in his mind under that concept. It's similar, you know, mesa di voce in, in opera would be kind of in this. These are just really um, terms are a whole can of worms too. We all have different sometimes definitions too, which can cause trouble. <laughs> I would this is, uh, you know, today in commercial singer, this is the singing. It's what people call mix, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we do have a different definition of mesa di voce, yeah. You know, so mesa di voce, what is it? It, You know, how would you define a quick definition of mesa di voce? Yeah. I, I mean, I've studied with Miller, and he would always do crescendo, decrescendo to sort of find that, you know, Goldilocks. And so that's why I would do, but if it's mix, you know, mezza versus mesa, you know, I don't know. The, um, how, so is that the question? Do we, oh, sorry. It's the in-between area, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not the soft, it's not the loud. Right. It's the quality and the focus and the clarity of your, your higher volume singing. Right. But it doesn't have the hollowness of, of right. the other end. So that's why I... I compare them both like classical, you're going to say, if you say mix, people will boo you off the stage. But <laughs> if you say, you know, in, in the commercial world, it's the same quality people are looking for. Right. Well, what I, I mean, I, I sort of teach, I love the, the glottal configuration stuff of like Herbst and Speck, that kind of stuff. And I look at it like a grayscale, you know, that really there's no, it's not quantal chest head mix. It's always you know, weaving in of one or the other and what's, so I look for what's your personal Goldilocks and then what's on either side of that, you know, kind of thing. That's great. Yes. Remember singing is, there are no definites because the vocal folds aren't divided up into keys, like on a piano. Exactly. Sliding scale. It moves in between everything and that's the beauty of it. All right. right. Uh, two sidetracked here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could go on and on and on.